Number three, choose to cheat. Choose to cheat. Cheating is very good in marriage. Now, I'm not talking about that cheating that we're thinking right now. Don't cheat on your marriage with work and hobbies. Instead, cheat on your hobbies and your work with your marriage. That doesn't mean that you have to leave early and don't do your job. We're going to talk about it in just a second. But I want us to take a look at Matthew chapter 15 verse 5 and verse 6. It says, so Jesus was talking about how the law says thou shalt honor your father and mother but you say so the Pharisees you say whoever says to his father and mother whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God and then he no need he then he need not honor his father or mother does you have made a commandment of God of no effect by your tradition so when I was in Israel um, they kind of notified me that when the Bible says thou shall honor your father and your mother it's not actually specifically referring to when you are with your parents house and you're young it's mainly referring to a retirement policy or when your parents are old and they need to retire and they cannot work no more that you honor your honor them by taking them to live with you when they're old now it also applies to be honoring to them when we live with them but it's mainly applied to honoring them when they're old because Israel didn't have retirement homes they actually had children's homes that's why it was so focused on having kids because that means nobody will take care of you when you're dead when you when excuse me when you're when you're old when you're of age when you're of age so the Pharisees were very tricky the Pharisees have taught this that if you take a room of your house that you were planning to give to your mom and daddy when they're older when they are retired, retired age and you give that room to God and you dedicate it, you come in and you say this room belongs to God. So you call your mom and daddy, your mom and dad is like getting older already, they've been providing and helping you and now it's your time to take them in and provide and care for them. You're like mom and dad I'm sorry I don't have room. What do you mean you don't have room? You, we saw the room. I give it to God. God lives there now. So Pharisees found a loophole saying, if you can give it to God, you don't have to house them in. And Jesus come in, he said, you guys are morons. Because you guys are crazy. He says, God doesn't need a room that belongs to your parents. God doesn't like those kind of sacrifices. Don't give to God what belongs to your family. You may say, but everything belongs to God certain things out of things that you give to God, God wants them to be allowed into your family. You have, if you have a family, you have a wife, you have a husband, if you have parents that are older, God wants us to give things that we may say, but I just rather give it to God. God says, you want to give it to me? Give it to your family. Come on somebody. Are you with me? Cheating, not on your family. But cheating on your hobbies, cheating sometimes on your friends, meaning not spending as much time with your friends as you did when you were single so that you can spend time with your family. Cheating maybe on your business where you're working 12 hours a day or 10 hour shifts just so you can you can get the final that breakthrough while your family is suffering. You're gonna cheat. The question is where are you gonna cheat at? Are you gonna cheat on your family or are you gonna cheat on your work? Because remember, when you had an emergency, your boss won't be in the hospital. It's going to be the people you cheated on. When things get tough, it's your family that's going to care for you. God forbid you have an incident or an accident where you cannot work. Two months and everybody forgets about you. And guess who's going to stand beside you? The very people that many times we tend to cheat on. And I'm not talking about sexual cheating, I'm not talking about an affair. I'm talking about when we, we put our family second, when we put our, our marriage last, hobbies first. I like what Andy Stanley says. He says, you love your family in your heart, but you don't love them on your schedule. They can't see your heart. Nobody gets at the end of his life and wishes they spend more time in the office. Man, I wish I would have just had one more sales. I wish I could have just worked one more weekend. So could make extra $100 to spend on new golf clubs. My God. T.D. Jake said this. He said, I'll never get finished everything I need to get done today. I will always miss something every day. Never let it be the same thing twice. So for example, if today 
you sacrificed your family to get something done make sure tomorrow you sacrifice something to be done for your family so don't have the same thing you sacrifice all the time and he said this he said touch everything but hold nothing too long if you hold it to have it you're not hiring the right people 11th president of India a scientist he passed away now he said this a person who stays late at an office is not a hard-working person instead he's a fool who doesn't know how to manage work within stipulated time he is insufficient and incompetent in his work I wonder how many times the things that we do at our jobs could be done faster if we would cut back the office chatter the use of social media and just kind of cruising around because then by the time that we look we need to leave we realize we haven't done much so we have to stay later and if you don't stay later you drop the job and very soon you're over they give you a review and they fire you you're like man I've been putting my family but you have not been using your work productively a person who stays late in his office all the time he's not planning he's not competent and we need to improve on that area This is your work and this is your family now this is something that if you drop see these things every single week have you noticed that you're not worried about this ball but in life it's the opposite this is the one that we're most concerned about this one our family can take it they know I'm providing for them this ball if you drop this ball what happens it bounces back up your work you'll always have it but when you drop this one I'm not sure if it's gonna handle that now it handled it praise God first year of marriage they got it so you're like well you know I gave my whole year to my job they're still good my wife look I mean she, she's a little, little bit tense but she's fine and so guess what you're doing you're increasing the speed you're like let's do more this is good <laughs> praise God and so what you're saying I can sacrifice my family this has to break my God <laughs> in the first <laughs> in the first service first time it just broke <laughs> my sister provided these and she's like lad she's like the, the the glass thing is not gonna break at all I was like trust me it will break and so but but the challenge what we have is that as many times we, we would play with it and so you know I'm just gonna save you guys from it and this is when this happens we're like, what happened it was just fine why couldn't she handle it what do you mean you, you mean my kids are doing that stuff now because I was gone all the time see your kids don't need your existence they need your presence how many of you know the fact that God exists it doesn't change us it's the fact that God is present with us that changes us and many times we as men we look at this and we're like man I was praying for God to make them stronger well why why do we always toss them why we don't toss this nothing's gonna happen to this it's gonna bounce back up your work and your hobbies if you give up golf for a year for the sake of your marriage listen you won't die if some of your single friends and other things and new opportunities and everything you have to prioritize this because once this hits the ground it breaks and just because you've trained your wife or you've trained your husband maybe today to take the hits and you do you know they're doing good listen there will be a day where there will be that last drop and they will snap and you can't blame them for it you have to take responsibility as a man and as a woman to keep that ball as most important I'm not saying to not treat your work with importance but a lot of things that we do at our job we can do so much more efficiently and more effectively that we have more time for our families I tell our staff all the time is that guys your mornings belong to God your evenings belong to your family they don't belong to meetings I was like you're here at the staff at the church for a reason most of the people that you would meet with they can come during the day here I was like let's not spend time chatting working around do, doing secondary things and then staying up till 11 o'clock doing meetings where we could improve our eight hour day fill them with important things and then go hang out with our family 
Most people know that when it comes to the evenings, I prioritize my marriage and prioritize my time with me first of all. I have a lot of people who will say, Vlad, we need to meet, we need to meet and it's great. But I, if I'm going to take every single meeting and let my health and let my wife and let my relationship with God take the back seat. If I'm going to cheat on my relationship with God, stay up late every day. If I stay up late, there's one thing. I have to cheat on Jesus. John, John Bevere taught me a lesson when I was a teenager and that's this. Every minute I spend after 10 o'clock is the minute I took away from Jesus in the morning. Period. And so I made a decision, Jesus my time with you starts after 10. so after 10 i gotta hit this head in the pillow why because the next morning i gotta give it to jesus uh, jesus is more important to me than anybody else and the second thing is my family and so we have to prioritize that choose to cheat on your habits on your social media and your tv shows on other things so that family your health and your relationship with god doesn't suffer but is doing good somebody say amen somebody say hallelujah so practically, practically what this means is give 15 minutes a day of meaningful conversation with your spouse and also take one night a week to go on a date with your spouse. Whether that date is in the park, whether the date is you, you hike a mountain, you prepare a little sandwiches there, whatever that is, but it preferably that it's not the same routine that it's every day in your house. If the routine in your house is the husband is watching the game and you are on your phone or on a computer, that's not a night with your spouse as a date. That's a good night to be together, you're chillaxing, but that's not a time where you are into each other's face, you're talking to each other and you're, you're having a good time. And maybe you don't have a lot of resources right now to go into something nice or a restaurant. That's fine. Olive Garden has really large meals. And breadsticks are free. And meals usually come with salad. And salad fills you up. You split the meal into two. Take hot water with lemon. Bring mint tea with you. <laughs> Stick that tea. That's how we did it for years. Me and my wife could not afford to go to. When we went on our dates, we had $100 for a whole month. And so on those dates, we would have our envelope for a date nights. $20 for a date night. Now, you know, with $20 nowadays, you can't even buy much. So we would go in and for me, I mean, I was like, man, great. I saw this as a challenge to fit it within $20. You know, and she wasn't very happy because she liked the food on the, the images, which is usually very expensive because the specials. I looked for the price, $11 pizza in Olive Garden, great. They discontinued that, by the way, now and stuff. So I was like, we split that into two. We still have $3 a tip and we even have maybe $1 to get something. They don't have a dollar menu. It sucks. It's McDonald's that has a dollar menu. And so we did that for years. But one thing that I did not do is I did not break our date nights. I was like, you know what? If we broke, we'll date like we broke, but we're going to still date. And I gave her a promise and I said, babe, and one day when we get a little bit more of money, you'll be able to order what you want. I'll order what I want. We'll be so happy. I remember she reminded me, she said, because now she can order what she wants. And so we go in and she orders whatever she wants. I order typically whatever is cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> she looks at the images I look at the price <laughs> and then when the bill comes in I'm like what what'd you order <laughs> and so but but now we can afford a little bit more but at the same time you got to value those date times come on somebody I live Rick Warren said he said if there will be more courting in our marriages less of our marriages will be in courts and then once a year take a vacation leave amazing three cities for seven days your wife's been nagging you about that probably for a while you're like we can't afford it if you have five rooms in your house rent one room for 250 and in 11 months you will accumulate enough money for that put that money aside when you get a promotion instead of buying a boat why don't you put that money aside and say you know what this extra money will go toward us leaving town going somewhere whether it's in a tent or whether it's to Mexico or whether it's to Hawaii whatever your budget allows you but when you leave for seven days and you disconnect it will do magic to your marriage are you with me